Guys, two quick announcements before we hop into the video. I've gotten so many messages, tweets, comments that you guys want some coaching. So what we've come up with is me, my man Nigel, Captain America, Omar Isof, Kaizen Training, Group Training. All we're taking is 200 spots. This is a way to build a community, like-minded people, give you guys some feedback and more individual attention than just the regular Kaizen program. So that's available right now if it's not sold out. Taking a very limited group, it is in the description below as well as if you ever want to try out or grab some of our training programs, all of our programs are 30% off right now, limited time. Use code, capital letters, SUMMER30 at checkout and get any program you want for 30% off, kaizentraining.com. Enjoy the video. We're gonna talk a little bit about the number one bench press mistake I see, and that is elbows flaring too early. Uh, now this is caused by many reasons and can uh, potentially cause injury, uh, but you're also leaking power, so it's gonna take away from uh, not only hypertrophy, but strength in your top end of your bench press power. Why do elbows flare early? And what I mean by that is kind of when you're benching, maybe you're in a good groove, a good path, and right away those elbows flare out, and then you're stuck kind of squeaking out the, the top end of the bench. It often happens um, on heavier loads rather than lighter loads. Uh, as well as when you uh, mess up your bar path and positioning isn't good. What's really going on is our shoulder joint is super mobile and uh, kind of with elbows flying early is a similar thing to kind of knees slamming in in the squat, um, except for the shoulder joint is more mobile than our hip joint. So uh, it's kind of ball and socket deal and it can kind of go in every direction, especially if you have uh, hypermobility. Uh, whereas obviously our knee joint is also ball and socket, uh, but it's restricted from our lower body trunk and how the um, hip socket is actually wrapped around the ball. So hypermobile joint, awesome. We can reach apples, we can eat, we can do all these ancient human things that we needed to survive. Um, but hypermobility or a mobile uh, joint isn't always the strongest. So we have to find stability to then be able to transfer uh, force from our muscles, our pecs, into the bench, moving the bar away from us. We always want our elbows from the unrack all the way down and all the way through the entire execution of the bench to remain underneath, if not just in front of the barbell. Now, if your elbows ever end up behind the barbell, this way towards your face, uh, you're not only putting a lot more stress on your delts with that elbow flare, which will happen, and also you're just leaking power. We're not in the best leverage uh, to lift the most amount of weight. And we obviously want to bench press because we want to make the gains, both hypertrophy and strength. And we want to lift the most amount of weight to reach both of those goals. So throughout the unrack, all the way down, that's why people say tuck your elbow. Now tucking your elbows is going to be relative to how you're built. If you have longer arms, uh, maybe you have a little bit less of an elbow tuck. If you have wider grip, less of an elbow tuck. If you're a little bit stumpier, a little shorter, a little bit closer grip, you'll have more of an elbow tuck. Regardless, that upper back position is always gonna be tight and elbows are always gonna be underneath and in front of the barbell. How do we do that? Well, number one mistake is kind of that upper back tightness. So upper back tightness is, we're always talking about squeezing our shoulder blades together, uh, that scapular retraction. And not only do you do that uh, on your setup, keeping your sternum high. You need to do that through the entire set, keeping that back tight, and the entire rep, even under a one rep max. It's similar to kind of the Valsava, where you're taking a big breath where you unrack, and you're holding that breath the whole time to stay tight. We're squeezing those shoulder blades back and down. Uh, now what that does is flex our traps, obviously flexes our rear delts, all these things, uh, but with the usage of proper leg drive and positioning the bench press, it'll keep our upper body stable. Uh, pinching the shoulder blade back down into the socket will now allow us to uh, have a platform to push into the bench, and it'll allow us to use our triceps, shoulders, uh, pecs, all of that in uh, continuity to move the barbell and transfer the most amount of power possible. If you have a loose back and that shoulder is kind of untucked in a position like this while you're pressing, now my uh, shoulder joint is mobile as it's supposed to be, but not during heavy loads. And it can kind of go anywhere. We'll get into this position, elbows behind the barbell, uh, and we can't transfer the power. So number two is the transfer of power and how we need to position our elbows with the bar. So even when you unrack, which I always suggest 
uh, you know, maybe 50% or more getting a lift off. Getting a lift off doesn't mean you're weak. Getting a lift off doesn't mean uh, that you can't lift the weight. Getting a lift off just purely allows you to be in the safest and strongest position possible. Uh, because when you have that tight back and you get an unrack by yourself, sometimes those shoulders untuck. But if you have a tight back and you get the unrack, you let your, your teammate or your lit training partner lift it for you and you're just gonna hold it. Number one thing besides the lift off and just thinking a uh, proper setup and getting our proper setup to squeeze our scapulas, uh, I always have uh, new athletes and myself when I'm warming up or even supersetted with my bench press workouts, we're always gonna do pull aparts and face pulls. Uh, this not only warms up the joint, uh, it allows us to work kind of our rotator cuffs and our rear delts and our upper traps, some of the muscles that sometimes get neglected, uh, but it'll allow us to feel the sensation of squeezing that back and proper positioning in the bench setup. Kind of band, and what you wanna do is use it about grip width of your bench. You can also go in a little bit as you get stronger, but what you wanna do is flex your lats and push your shoulders down, stern them up as you're beginning. And then all you're gonna do is pull that into you, arms locked or slightly bent, and you're gonna pull those rear delts together in the back and pull the band into your chest, almost like you're benching. Now, when we're benching, we're gonna do a very similar thing, but now the difference is it's obviously a metal, steel, iron barbell instead of a rubber band. And when we do that, we wanna bend the bar not only into our chest, but also this way, pulling our pinkies together. This is gonna automatically keep our shoulder joint more stable. If that elbow is flared, now my shoulder is all flared. If I can pull it together, pinkies together, with the back scapular retraction, now I can pull that pinky under and now I'm flexing my lat, flexing my pec and flexing my delt and that's gonna all those three muscles together maintain that shoulder stability throughout the lift. So I'm bending those pinkies together, bending the barbell as I'm pulling it as a row, right? So we got lat, rear delt, pec, delt, uh, all locked in, pinkies together, rowing it into myself and on the way up, we're gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna still keep the scapula retracted but I'm going to flare my uh, elbows just slightly as long as the elbows are under the bar and in front flaring is going to allow that bar path to go in an arc now an arc to bar path is is optimal for most a straight bar path is moving it away from your levers we want to move it back up towards our eyes towards the rack towards our main movers but as we mentioned an early flare is our shoulders flaring what we're all trying to do is keep that scapular attracted and just flare our elbows if you can see my elbow flare is very different than a full shoulder flare. And the issue that I see, the number one mistake that we've been talking about for the last six minutes, hopefully you guys are staying with me, is that your elbows flare is the result of your shoulder flaring. Now if we keep that lat tight, pec tight, scapula retracted, and we just control our elbows, we'll be in an optimal position to press the most amount of weight while keeping our shoulders safe. Hopefully that helped you guys out. Be sure to subscribe to me the one and only, link should be in the description. I got vlogs, I got instructional, I got training footage, everything coming your way. I drop four videos a week, appreciate you guys.